This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's get right into the news and make sure you smash that bell. I appreciate you guys so much. Sorry for the late news. Um, I was taking a nap. I wasn't feeling that good. But uh, anyways, this is Jordan Tower with JT News, and Drake is pushing his trial back along with OBJ. Uh, it is crazy. So uh, Drake can do whatever he wants. He said... Eh, guys, this trial doesn't fit into my schedule. We're going to have to do it a little later. So he's requesting to be mid-February 2021 because he's, he's too busy, man. He's, he's, he'll be occupied with a professional uh, professional commitments. And then OBJ said, hey, man, I got football, man. But football's canceled, right? It's going to probably be canceled. So uh, that's not going to work now. Um, OBJ and Drake are headed to court because... Um, ex-boyfriend of Kourtney Kardashian, uh, they got into it with him, uh, a while back in 2018, and this guy is, you know, he's taking him to, to court, man, so, uh, they gotta go fight that. Speaking of trials, YNW Melly, okay, this guy is, uh, here's an update for him, uh, he, they, they say he might get out this year for, uh, a double homie, okay? Now, uh, his mother also warned to be more vigilant about what she posts online, um, noting that her past interactions could have potentially been costly. They are watching you like a hawk. Um, he teased his own jail release. He, he, he has a hit song out with uh, Juice World. The remix, the, the, the song he had out, I don't want to say the name because it'll get demonetized, but he has a song that's on the top 50. And he remixed it with Juice World. I can't say the name because YouTube doesn't like that. But anyways. <clears throat> and then the proof against Mr. Henry isn't strong. My client is not guilty. That's what his attorney says. So, uh, I don't know. But th it sounded convincing. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. It sounded like good evidence. But, uh, hey, I'm not a, I'm not a juror. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. So, hey, it's up to the judicial system, man. It's none of my business. Then we got, uh, what else is going on out here? Everybody else is freaking out. Everything's canceled out here. Uh, everything's canceled. They canceled everything, man. Schools are being canceled. So, you know what they're doing? They're just trying to nip this in the bud in two weeks, okay? We had other things like this in the past. H1N, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people, it was affected a lot of people back in 2009. There was something in 2004, like... This happens every couple of years, you know, if something serious like this. But I guess this is just spreading a lot faster than the other ones. And they're trying to just get, contain it quickly and get rid of it. So uh, two weeks, I think everything's going to be canceled. Uh, so uh, that's it, man. I, I don't know. I would say go to the store, get some baked beans and stuff like that and just chill out, man. You know, just, just chill out. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Jordan Tower with JT News, and I will check you guys in the next one. Peace. Hey guys, this is Jordan Tower with JT News, and we got a special guest today. We got Ghost the Incredible. What's good, man? Hey, how's it going? What's going on, man? So you might know Ghost the Incredible from all the Hell Rel pro uh, projects we've been promoting on here. Um, he should be familiar now, especially with the Dave East uh, exclusive that just dropped with you, Eagles, called you uh, with you, Dave East, and Hell Rel. Correct. Yeah, no, that's hot. So tell me, I'm sure people are wondering who this guy Ghost the Incredible is at this point. I mean, they've seen Harrell talk about you for two projects now. And um, I just want to like, I want you to tell them who you are and like where they can find out more about you. Like, let's, so let's start. How long have you been rapping and, and where are you from? Uh, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. I came here when I was 18 months old. And, mm -hmm. uh, I started from where? From Colorado Springs. Okay. And I started writing when I was like eight years old on a school, uh, a class project that mm -hmm. I had. And uh, the kids in the class loved it. So I just kept going from there. It just, it, it ended up being a passion that I've had my entire life. Tell people kind of like how you grew up and how that um, affected your music. I grew up in North Omaha which uh, if you Google it, you can see that it's a poverty-stricken area. You know, there's a lot of gangs around and stuff like that, violence, you know, things that anybody grow goes through growing up in a ghetto environment, you know, so to speak, quote-unquote. 
Yeah. And uh, it was rough, but um, I've made it through. You know, I survived. And you'll hear a lot of that in my music because that's, you know, it's been implanted in my brain since a very young age, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's your, you rap about what you know, you know, in, right. in your life, you know? So, you know, if you grew up rich, you probably rap about that. If you grew up with hardships, you're going to know that you're going to rap about that. And then what was your influences growing up? Ball Thugs and Harmony was, uh, oh, I was that's a dope. huge Ball Thugs and Harmony fan. Like, I, yeah. I even grew my hair out. I thought I was the sixth member. What else? Because you have, like, uh, I like your voice when you're rapping, too. You got, like, a raspy type of uh, deep voice. Like, it's dope. You know, like, I've been I've been huge fans, and I appreciate that. I've been huge mm-hmm. fans of different artists throughout the uh, throughout the time. Like Easy E, that was one of my big inspirations. Mm-hmm. I like Chameleonaire, you know, Trey the Truth, yeah, uh, Dave East, Hell Rail, The Diplomats. You know, it, it's it's a variety of different styles of music that I like. The Game, you know, Fifty Cent, stuff like that. Yeah. Did you um Did you ever try singing or anything since you weren't to Bone Thugs? Did you ever try to like sing on your track? In the beginning, have, yeah, yeah, we were, we we're on to Fifty Cent and all that. How did you and Hell Rel connect? You being in Nebraska, him being in New York. You know, management uh, dealt with some situations with Hell Rel and pulled everything together. Nap Records, shout out to Jeff Nap, and yeah. uh, pulled everything together, brought him out here. We worked on a project together, uh, two projects actually. I was on his yeah. last album, and then we did an album together as well. Yeah. And, uh, it was just a wonderful thing, and, and um, we, you know, we enjoyed good food and stuff while he was here. In the first video, you didn't have the beard, right? Right. It's winter time here, so so yeah. I'm cold. Man. I, I got some, <laughs> put some fur on the face. You know what I mean? You got to be careful now, because the corona. They say you can't have a beard. <laughs> this, thing, this is a manly beard. It'll fight off any virus. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. you have, you just released a project on Dot Piff, and we saw the video with you, Dave East, and Hell Row, that uh, animated video. The mixtape is called Eagles. Okay. Dot Piff, and it's got Eagles, which is a track with Dave East and Hell Row, which is... Which is fire. Go check. Yeah, I know you guys have heard that. Yeah. Phenomenal song. We also have Gimme Love is on there. Yeah. We also have... Uh, I can't remember every song that's on there, but there's, there's six songs on there all together. Okay, and you can get it on NapRecords.com. You get st- so you you move out to Nebraska. You start rapping at eight, you know, do, with, for a school project, and obviously it develops into something uh, where you keep going with it because you're still doing it today. Tell me how that progressed, like as you went through high school and everything. Like, how did you get? How did you work your area, in Nebraska? Well, I started off. I, uh... I shoveled snow and I bought a karaoke machine one winter. I was like, I think I was nine when I did that. Yeah. And uh, I was doing it with the tapes where, where you know, you, you put the key, and I bought a keyboard as well, where you put the keyboard there, put the microphone to it, dub over on the next tape and put your vocals on it, you know? Yeah. And uh, that, that's how I started with that. Then I ended up advancing to a computer and mm-hmm. I really didn't attend high school too much. You know, I was a, a troubled youth, you could say. And, yeah. Uh, and I just started, I, I got myself involved in the streets and that's where my buzz was able to create, you know, everybody's like, man, you know, you can really, you can really create songs. Like I, I didn't just rap, you know, like standing on yeah. corners, I music, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I dropped my first mixtape when I was like 15. And then I- Now I have a question. I have a question before you get to that. A lot of people wouldn't, when they think of Nebraska, you know, they don't have, they, they don't know that their studio, are there studios and everything out there that you can go to? Or did you have to actually build a home studio? Well, when I was younger, I built a home studio. I was really confined by the area that I was at because, okay. you know, when, when you grow up in, in an area like that, you you have a very closed mind, you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. you only know that area, so... I didn't realize like how big the world actually was, you know, when I was younger. Mm-hmm. But there are st- plenty of studios out here to record at, you know. But back and then, not recorded at home. So you made your first mixtape at home, and you made a CD. And how did you distribute the CD? 
throwing it in the streets. Like I would stand on the corner for days, for not not days at a time, but I would stand there all day long and come back the next day and stand there all day long in the middle of the winter, summer, whatever, you know. Were you giving them out for free how, or selling them? Selling them, selling them, you know, five bucks a piece. Oh, nice, people with support? Oh yeah, like there was, I remember one time I had a girlfriend, she, uh, she was working and she was making like a few hundred bucks every week or something. And this is when I was like 17. Yeah. And she was like, how am I gonna tell my parents you're a rapper? And it's like, I make more money in the day selling my CDs Week, you know? Oh, so it was like that. You were getting you were getting them off like that. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, if you stand there all day, you know, selling them for five <laughs> bucks a piece, you know, you're gonna make a couple hundred bucks in a day, you know. That's true. You know, especially if you're a good salesman. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and where that's no longer possible, you know, like people don't have CD players in their cars. No Yo, that's crazy, right? Right. Like, how do you do it? now? I guess you just do it. Sending your links out, I guess that's yeah, the best right. you can do. You- right, right. It's, and, and it's oh, the game is oversaturated. You know, there's so many <sighs> artists that figured out you can create a home studio and record at home. You know, and yeah. studio time is much cheaper. So, so it's, it's free. <laughs> right. It's technically free. I mean, you need a hundred dollar right. mic and a beat. You know, everybody definitely go check his stuff out. It's hot. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. And tell them where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter and everything. At Ghost the Incredible. Ghost the Incredible. Everything. Ghost Incredible, yep. And it's spelled just like how it sounds. G-H-O-S-T-T-H-E-I-N-C-R-E-D-I-B-L-E. Awesome. And go to naprecords.com to get all the releases.